Here at Super Bunny Hop, we like to consider ourselves fans of weirdness, who are interested in spreading the appreciation of weirdness. And Burrito Galaxy is a game about weirdness. It uses deliberately crude work to get its point across. It has fun with itself, and it wants to share that fun with you. The lead developer is a mysterious man who goes only by the name of Mushba, and he refused to show up on camera, instead opting to allow a colleague to speak on his behalf. I'm Mason, Mason Paulos, and I am the developer programmer of Burrito Galaxy, one half of uh, Swagsoft Softworks Workshop. And what is Burrito Galaxy? It's a first person burrito core roguelike like. Burrito core? Yes, and um, it's kind of like a weird grid based Metroidvania adventure uh, simulation thing. Burrito Galaxy is a part of this newfangled video game punk art aesthetic. It has the kind of style that evokes the works of Porpentine and Michael Bro, except instead of looking like glitch art, it's crayon scribbles. In fact, they actually were using more conventional, legit pixel art in an earlier version, until they changed it to crayon doodles because crayon doodles wouldn't be good enough. We wanted to, like, we, we didn't want to make pixel art because pixel art we think is really overdone even though it's really cool. Um, we wanted to be kind of, yeah, I guess you could say punk. We wanted to be really different and try not to like make a pixel platformer thing, so. These deliberately ugly aesthetics are actually a delivery device for humor, creativity, personality, expression, and wit. Everything about the game is sarcastically designed, from the graphics to the movement system to the combat rules to the characters and the story. Um, basically, you're a bean thing and you fall, you get hit by an asteroid and you fall onto an, another asteroid like planet called SAL 5A, and it's full of crazy burrito dudes. It's basically like an alternate reality if everything was burrito core. Also, unlike how games are supposed to work nowadays, movement in Burrito Galaxy is tile-based, and you use Q and E to rotate a full 90 degrees instead of turning the mouse to move in little bits of degrees. At the same time, it's calling back to Legend of Grimrock from 2012 and Dungeon Master from 1987. Your basic default attack requires you to take a hit in order to distribute a hit. It's a real-time reinterpretation of the dice-rolling attack, counter-attack exchange of roguelikes, or turn-based RPGs. And in order to break out of that mode and graduate to glorious real-time projectile combat, you get to squish enemies with the same ability that you use to solve block puzzles. Movement through this dungeon crawl is gated Metroidvania style, with your new abilities having multiple uses for combat, exploration, and puzzle solving. You'd think that the crude aesthetics and the janky movement are things that people want to avoid, but as it turns out, that kind of weirdness can be the exact same thing that makes a game interesting enough to play. And it especially works because these guys are owning it. They are owning the weirdness, they know what they're doing, and they know how hilarious it is to see that it's actually working. Is it kind of terrifying going up against these other games with more higher fidelity pixel art and 3D art when your game is made out of kind of 2.5D Doom sprites with crayons? Um, we think it's, we just think it's funny really. Like, it's funny that we're here and we can do all this and show our game and even though like it looks kind of crazy and weird, people still enjoy it. Yeah, it's, we're not really terrified at all. Burrito Galaxy is scheduled to release on PC, Mac, and Linux sometime in 2014. So, Bean Thing is the official internal description yes. of the main character. A giant blue bean creature. 